Hello, hello. This is Derek from One River Tea. Here we are in Chaozhou, a small city in eastern Guangdong. What we're going to do today is look at the production of an all-natural, handmade Chinese incense. So let's check it out. Hey guys, this is Derek with uh, Miao Yi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's, he's the maker behind all the incense. Today what we're going to do is we're going to look at how he makes the lavender incense. And this is from getting the raw materials, grinding them up, adding water, pressing them, oxidizing them, fermenting them, and drying them out. So let's check it out. So here are the raw lavender flowers. What we'll do is we'll pass this through the grinder and turn it into powder. So here's the powdered lavender. After they grind it up, they pass it through a filter because sometimes it's not fine enough. Here's the properly ground lavender. As you can see, it's lost a lot of its blue already. Okay. First, we weigh out the dry ground lavender. So as with every proper recipe, you first need to measure out the amount of powdered lavender and other powdered ingredients you want. Xiangfen just means fragrant powder. In this case, it's powdered acre wood. Nianfen just means glue powder. As Miao Yi is a practicing Buddhist, he's vegan, and likewise, the glue powder is vegan. I believe it's made out of an elm bark sap. Mix it up a bit. Add a little bit of water. <laughs> So this is a very important part where you add water and knead it by hand. You have to make sure that the water content's not too high and it sticks properly. It's a very delicate procedure. If you add too much water, then the whole project's wasted. When we say handmade incense is what we're talking about. Since they want it as dry as it can be while still being able to form it into a nice little ball. Mm. So here we are, everything's been combined. We have a really fragrant ball of raw incense. Oh, interesting. Okay. So then we seal it in plastic and let it pa jiao. So they'll put it they'll put it in here for three hours and just let it kind of ferment and kind of the flavors to mold merge. This pressing process is a little bit of the moment of truth. We have to make sure that the ingredients were mixed together properly, the moisture content's on point, that the glue powder will do its job, and that there are no air bubbles in there. Because what we want is a nice, even burning stick of incense. So, let's see how we did. incense is pressed and shaped. It's put on this drying rack 
and then allowed to air dry. So this incense is still wet. So it's it's air dried for over two days. And then once it's air dried, it should look a little more like this. So as you can see, this is much darker. It still hasn't quite dried out. Where this is just your dosha gan lama. So these are dried out. So even after it's air dried, some of them turn out a little crooked. He says they maybe 20 or 30 percent end up very crooked and then they don't sell them. He says it's also difficult when it's rainy, when there's too much humidity in the air, that incense doesn't dry out quick enough and can also mold. And so they lose a lot due to the weather and the, the conditions. This is good. Yeah. So the, these are these are the good straight ones. Here's a not straight one. So this one won't make it into the boxes, but this one will. All right, that is the production process for the lavender incense, and a very similar for all the other types of incense they're making, with the rose incense, the guayhua, even the tea incense that they're making. But what we're going to do is we're going to team up with them this summer and include free samples of all of their incenses for orders. I think we'll do increments of 30, 60, $100 orders, get two, four, and six sticks. So check out for those promotions, and I'll see you again next time. See ya.